Maybe we'll begin with Ryan Aber. Yeah, Alex, y'all got after uh, the quarterback from really the first play of the game with what Ronnie Perkins was able to do. Uh, how important was that uh, to, to your game plan coming in? And, and just, uh, you know, what does that stay, say for what this defense is right now? Yeah, I mean, I think that that's, you know, the, the week in and week out type of thing, you know, in terms of uh, when you say game plan. I mean, that, that, that's something you want to be. That, that's something, a calling card of, of what, what we want to be defensively at, at, at Oklahoma is, is we want our opponents to have a respect factor for, for what we are up front. Um, it's very difficult to play good defense. Uh, I mean, the history of this sport, but certainly uh, in this day and age, if you can't have an impact uh, in your defensive front. And so, uh, no, it, it was good. Um, obviously, from uh, like you mentioned, you know, kind of that first play, you know, not, not, not suggesting that the first play necessarily sets the tone in any direction, but, uh, um, but, but certainly been, been pleased with those guys up front. I think they're, they're, the confidence is building and um, that uh, um, certainly can uh, you know, give, give you some freedom in terms of some of the things you can do coverage-wise in that. Appreciate it, Alex. Sure. Okay, I think Kerry's ready. Yes, so sorry about that. Uh, Alex, um, you know, you don't have Jaden Davis tonight, uh, but you play a lot of DJ Graham. Obviously, Woody's been coming along. Uh, just kind of what did, what did that mean to the defense tonight? You know, another young guy to really step up in the spotlight like that. Yeah, you know, DJ is one of those guys that, uh, you know, uh, is, you know, what, what he is as a freshman, what, what he's going to be, you know, 12 months from now and then and, and 24 months from now. You, you talk about, man, I, I don't want to put too high expectations maybe on anybody. But, uh, um, no, that, that, uh, he, he's one that uh, – um, he, he could walk in any locker room as a freshman uh, and have an immediate impact. So it, it, uh, it's exciting to see. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it certainly you saw game plan wise. I mean, the, the, the willingness to attack those guys and then, you know, uh, you're on scholarship for a reason. So you, you got to make sure that you hold up in those moments. And, and when your number's called, you know, it just, um, it, it, uh, you, you, you have to respond, you know, uh, specifically in the six, there's no hiding. You know, there, there's, uh, and we've talked about this before, if you, if you want to defend the run <clears throat> and, and, and the possibility of a quarterback run, and oh, by the way, there's a route being ran, there, there's not extra guys for everything. You know, and so there, there's a percentage of time that those guys uh, are on islands. Um, that's the job description. No one made you be a corner. Um, it, uh, um, it, it's exciting when, when uh, like I said, those guys respond uh, in those moments. And certainly as a young guy, excited to see DJ uh, uh, perform that way. Thanks, Alex. Jason Kersey. Yeah, Alex, with, with the game sort of in hand there at the end on Oklahoma State's last drive, you guys still came up with a goal line stop. What was your message to the defense going out for that last one when, you know, I think if they'd scored, you know, a lot of people would have thought it was no big deal. But I'm wondering what you what your message to them was. Yeah, I, I think in that moment, I, I you know, I'm going to give them a lot of credit. It was probably more messaging on their part, uh, you know, specifically tonight. I, I, one of the things we've talked a lot about at length, and, and, and I'll be the first one to admit that we failed at times, and we've had this conversation post-game, and we felt a whole lot different several weeks ago, um, that, you know, our, our performance always matters. Uh, and, and, and part of that is defensive football. Part of that is, is you know, playing at this level. Um, it, it, they don't time stamp your missed tackle. It's the fourth quarter, so it didn't happen. You know, they, they don't put the score next to – you know, the, the, the blown coverage or, you know, name the, name, you know, name the poor play that you could have as a defensive football player. And so, you know, re really uh, not, not making that point because it, it, uh, um, it, it is something that, uh, you know, guys don't think about, but, but, but making that point because it does, it controls outcomes. It, it controls these guys' careers and taking more ownership in that, you know, and that's one of the things we keep talking about. It's your career. It's your career. I can't make you finish. You know, I, I, we can talk to you about it. We, we can explain it to you. We can we tell you how important it is, you know, and, and we can talk about standard of, of what we want to be as a program and, and specifically as a defense. Uh, but, but at some point, you got to take ownership of yourself and say, you know, this, this is how I'm going to play the game because uh, I'm, a, I'm an Oklahoma Sooner and I decided to, to, to play defense. And I mean, I, I, it's either thumbs up or thumbs down, you know, uh, and that, that's four quarters worth uh, chew on film. Thanks, Alex. Okay, let's go to James Hale. Alex, you stoned the running game. Uh, Hubbard never got loose. Uh, they only averaged 2.8 yards a rush. You made them one-dimensional. Uh, that, that had to be one of the keys to the game, right? 
No, it certainly is. And, and you know, it's, it's always fun as a, as a, as a defensive coach to, to use that phrase, you know, one, one dimensional. Um, and, and if it was only that, that, that simple and that easy uh, to, to do on, you know, on any consistent basis, you know, even for four quarters. And so I uh, was really pleased that way. I, I thought, uh, you know, obviously we'll watch the film and we'll find things that, uh, uh, you know, make you frustrated. But, uh, you know, I thought we tackled. I, I thought guys pursued. I thought, you know, I, I just see intent. I, I, I don't. There's, a, there's less of those plays where you see an individual on our defense, regardless of the level, whether it's, it's D-line linebackers or, or, or secondary, that are just content with being in our gap and saying, you out of 10, make, make, make a play. We, we've, uh, the, you know, had that. And, and, and so that, that's not what we want to be. That, that, that's not what uh, uh, the, the, the structure of this thing is, is designed to be. And so uh, it's just seeing that, just, just you know, it, it's not okay to, uh, you know, kind of be where you're supposed to be. We're talking about production and all that. So. Uh, no, it, it uh, certainly was uh, good to see. Thanks, Alex. Keegan Renault. Yeah, Alex, we talked to you a lot about last year about Kenneth Murray and him being the kind of the cover boy for your defense. Do you feel that way about Ronnie Perkins and especially the energy he's been able to bring to you guys um, since his return? Yeah, I mean, I, I obviously a different, different, uh, uh, you know, uh, how it gets done, you know, the sure. how, you know, but the what, to your point, you know, the, the what is very evident, you know, what, what, get, what happens is that it affects everything, you know, it, it affects, and, and obviously it's not just Ronnie, I, I'd highlight the entire front, because um, there were some individuals doing a hell of a job uh, when he wasn't with us, but, but, but certainly, I mean, you, you see a guy that uh, uh, is, 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 is reckless in, in the right ways, um, it's something that uh, I think uh, offensive obviously have to, to account for, um, you know, regards where, where he lines up, whether it's in, in uh, an inside position or, or uh, um, you know, inside attack or outside attack, and, and you know, it, it, it makes it, uh, you know, f fun, you know, calling stuff in, in certain situations. Specific, you know, where, where can we put him? We, we moved him around a little bit tonight. Didn't have tons of opportunities just based on what they were doing. Um, but, uh, you know, something we like to do more. But, uh, no, thrilled, thrilled for him that he's back with us, and, and, and obviously you see the impact. Back to Ryan Aber. Yeah, Alex, uh, another big turnover by your defense tonight early in the game. Uh, I guess, first of all, how gratifying is that to, to see that continue? And also, what was the most impressive thing about the play that David made there to, to come up with that interception? Yeah, we talk about strain all the time. And, and, and one of the things that, uh, that we do on Thursdays we, when, and we highlight NFL football and we go through you know, you know, turnovers, takeaways that, that NFL uh, uh, the players have. And, and you know, it's kind of like mirror the model. Is kind of the, the idea behind it. And, and the thing that we highlight so often is it's typically not the easy play, you know? And, and, and so tr just as we've struggled mightily and we've had so many conversations about it uh, in terms of getting those, uh, you know, takeaways is, is really trying to, 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 okay, diagnose, okay, what, what does it actually look like? Um, you know, can we emphasize it more? And, and, and you know, uh, we've talked so much about it, uh, everybody on this call, um, you know, all the things that we try to do and can't emphasize it more. Okay, well, then, you know, trying to think about, okay, what, 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 can, we, what can we do to not a, it inspire them to go get it? It's not, you know, watch as fans. You know, it's not a highlight. It, it's literally just diagnosing, okay, how, how are these things getting done? What's the common denominator? And the common denominator, you see everything that we talk about. You know, guys straining. Uh, to, to, to quarterbacks in terms of sack cause fumble, for instance, you know, getting there, you know, and, and we've had that, that, those type of plays where the quarterback has to throw it uh, before he wants to. And it's an errant throw that turns into a tip, Texas Tech, uh, a couple of times. Or, or, you know, so it, 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 it's strain. It, it's, it's obviously guys doing their job. You know, if you're supposed to be 12 yards deep, you have a tendency if you're at eight yards, it doesn't come your way. Um, you know, or, or you know, uh, the cover three corner or, or a post safety. You know, if, if the receiver's behind you, guess what? You're not going to make it. It's at that level and our level. Uh, so just those, those common denominators, it, it's everything we talk about. Uh, again, strength of the football, playing together, I meaning doing your job. And then the other side of it is the physical nature of things. But what you saw with that play, I know I'm talking a lot, uh, is, is what you saw with that play was strain. I mean, that, that's, that's, that you, want, you want to look up the definition of it, watch that play. It, it's a, an unwillingness to say maybe uh, it'll, it'll uh, uh, you know, I can get a finger on it or something like that. Or I wish it was a little bit easier for me. Uh, now you see a guy just straining, and 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 again, what what the neat thing is now we're starting to see what the impact is. They saw against Texas Tech, all of a sudden get get that extra possession to the offense, uh, and see what they can do with it. So uh, something that uh, again, that's a week by week. You don't get credit from the next, you know, uh, 
uh, in the next game for, for what you got done tonight, but that's something that's got to continue. Appreciate it, Alex. Sure. Okay, a couple more. James Hale. Alex, tonight you had four sacks. You had seven tackles behind the line of scrimmage. You moved the line of scrimmage. You owned the line of scrimmage. When you get a chance to do that, how does that really help you call a game? I would imagine it gives you more weapons to work with, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, what, 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 uh, um, you know, what, what you're able to do is, is it, it gives you a chance to, at, at, at times and situations, I'll just present themselves, but, but to, to mix coverage. You know, we mentioned, okay, let's, let's not have those, a corner or a secondary guy on an island all the time. Well, well, you know, if you're not getting, you know, any type of pressure on the quarterback, for instance, in the pass game, it's very difficult to, okay, well, then we got to add, we got to add a body. You know, someone else has to be involved in it. Um, and so it gives you some, some availability uh, that way. And it's the same thing in, in terms of, you know, if you can, if you can, you know, in the run game, not allow a play to get started. And that's what a TFL can do. You know, it, it's, you know, you, you have fits, a single gap defense, and everybody has their responsibilities. But, but if you can penetrate, you know, one guy can eat up two blocks. And, 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 you know, and, and not let a play actually get started. And once again, you don't have to load the box in terms of numbers uh, and bodies. And that, that, that's a, um, you know, simple answer, but, but uh, uh, it's hard to do. Um, and and, and you're, you're very appreciative of the opportunity when, when they present themselves um, because, uh, you know, so often you're, you're, you're it, it's, a, I go back to the numbers game. It, it uh, you know, so often you feel like you, you, you don't have enough uh, where you want them on a particular play, but uh um, no, uh, credit again goes to the front. Thank you. Thanks, Alex. Sure. Okay, last one, Caleb McCurry. Alex, uh, Lincoln just said earlier that he tries not to think about, you know, where he is in the Big 12 and what he needs to do to win another title. But for you, how often do you think about where you and you guys are, you know, in the Big 12 ranks? And how does it feel to kind of, you know, think about being a step closer to controlling your own destiny, you know, in the pursuit of a sixth uh, Big 12 title for this program? Sure. I, I think what, what uh, again, I, I, and you're asking me and you want my opinion, so I'll, I'll say just from my lens it, is I look at it playing meaningful football in, in, the, uh, in the month of November. And, you know, as a, as a coach, um, that, that is something that uh, um, it is, is rare, quite frankly. I mean, it, 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 uh, um, it, it always has impact. It has impact on, on how you finish seasons. It's had, you know, from an individual standpoint, player standpoint, you're talking about all conference teams are decided based on, you know, how, how you finish seasons and that, um, and, and it's bowl games and all that stuff. So, you know, meaningful football in November is, is something that uh, your antennas are up for. Um, and, and it needs to be, it should be, because you work, a, you know, a calendar year uh, that to, to, to put yourself in a situation that, that, again, at the tail end of this thing, you're four months in or whatever it is, uh, that the games mean something. Um, and so that, that is uh, uh, at the forefront. Um, it, it's, does the intensity go up in, in this month? I, I would say yes. I think the teams that have the most success uh, are also the ones that are most consistent. Uh, so it's consistent intensity that ultimately you know, gives you a shot. But uh, no, it's it, uh, uh, meaningful football. Man, that, that, uh, that, that's why you get in it uh, from a coaching standpoint.